I hardly ever play drops, but the thing is, is that when Kano comes in the building, it, it makes me feel inadequate. Because <laughs> you're always fresh dipped. Yeah. Like, you always look like you've just, you've just pulled tags off what you're Speak wearing. Speak about me. Speak. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. But, but it's true, though. Yeah. You always look like you've just literally just gone. Tags out, yeah. <laughs> Kano, welcome to BBC Radio 1 Extra. Uh, how you doing, Jam? Um, more than good, because this has been a long time in the making. Yeah. We said we would do this a long time ago, mm-hmm. and then it took you a long time to deliver the album. <laughs> but having spent time with the album, having listened to the album, I would have waited a decade for this album. Oh, that's sick to hear. You have smashed it on so many different levels. And I'll be really honest with you, I was worried. Mm-hmm. Because... The anticipation, the expectation. Yeah. And, you know, I, I count you up there with, with artists like Nas. Okay. In terms Talk of... Talk about me. <laughs> but in terms of lyrical ability and also in terms of the fact that, you know, when you put out a body of work, it's a body of work that I know that I'm going to live with. Mm-hmm. And Nas has made a few missteps. Yeah, everyone In terms of his to. albums. Okay, yeah. This ain't a misstep for you. This is a, <laughs> this is a defining moment. Yeah, I feel this is a... St- like, I mean, uh, I know we're promoting this record, but I, I, I want to... I've got so much more to give, you know, and I feel this is a big, massive step in the right direction, you know what I mean, and in the, in the, into the future for me. Um, you're right, it was something that obviously took a while. Um, and I don't, I won't say like I was nervous ever, but I was aware of mm. the pressure, you know, from around me, from outside, you know. Um, but you kind of just got to crack on and just believe that you're doing something great and um yeah believe in yourself and it comes to the time when you gotta just you know release it and yeah. it's it's like a it's like a it's like a release moment but also mm. it's like a slightly um uh you know like not not scared but like you know you just want people to love it yeah i i, I don't think you've got any trouble there mm. i don't think you've got any trouble there it, it was like one thing I didn't, well, I'm not really a fan of is like putting so much songs out off of the record beforehand. Yeah. Like it's just because I like people to hear it at once as a body. Um, but that's just how the game is now. Mm. And you've got to, you know, slightly change how you, you know, you've got to move with the, with the, with the game, yeah. you know. So um, I wasn't really totally comfortable with doing that, but I think it helped and it made a lot of sense. I think it not only helped, but to be honest, having listened to the album, you didn't give away your trump cards. Mm. And I think that what you've done with what you've released so far is that it's kind of, for want of a better phrase, will have lulled people into a false sense of security. Mm-hmm. Even though, let's be honest, Three Wheel Ups has, has made a lot of MCs go back to their <laughs> <laughs> to their rhyme book and going, hmm, maybe I should rethink my entire career. <laughs> a lot of applications have been made for fast food restaurants since Three Wheel Ups came out. <laughs> <laughs> Your music is a part of people's lives. That's, that's what it is about, you know, um, making records that people remember the first time they listen to. You know what I mean? It becomes important to them, you know, um, I just had a, a a listening session with around thirty or forty fans or something, and you know had had a little chat with uh, most of them there individually, and it was like, oh, your music got me through this, and you know what I mean. Uh, it's like you've taught me so much through your lyrics, or oh, you know, you you inspire me, and uh, it's how like, does that how does that make you feel as I mean let's not talk about you as the artist but you as a human being how does that make you feel knowing that you've got that level of influence on people's moods um, it's it's an amazing feeling at the same time you know it's still weight on your shoulders because you don't ever want to uh, do wrong by them you know and I told them today look I don't want to kid around I don't I didn't want to just like release an album that I didn't think was up to scratch just because a demand was there. Mm. Everyone, when's the next album? When's the next album? All right, there you go, have it. Like, no, nah, I kind of risked everything. I risked maybe being forgotten about, mm. you know, um, taking this long. <sighs> I'm blessed that the people are there, with, you know, their ears open and have waited and hopefully will appreciate the effort that's gone into it. 
But it's about making important records, hopefully seminal records, you know, not just hype tunes here and there, yeah. like bodies of work. That's the kind of artist that I respect and that's the artist that I want to be. Heavily inspired by, you know, what I call the manner, you mm. know, where I'm from. But like I speak about, you know, my, my mum coming over in the, must have been like either late 60s or early 70s and coming straight from Jamaica on a boat, docking in Southampton and going straight to Cannon Town, you know what I mean? In like quite a predominantly white, <laughs> you know, hardcore kind of yeah. area. And, you know, obviously throughout my my musical career, you've seen my influence from like Jamaican music, but obviously, you know, my influence, you know, from East London. Yeah. Like East, East London means a lot to me and has a strong identity you know, in mm. my music and will always be that way. So um, I speak about that a lot, you know, but it's quite an autobiographical record. I'm chatting about stuff I never really have spoken about before, even in conversation, like mm. even thing I'm saying now, like I never really just sit down and talk to my, you know, mates like this, you know? Yeah. I don't know why it, why it came now. Um, I think it's a lot to do with growth, mm. um, uh, you know, allowing yourself to be vulnerable and feel comfortable saying stuff you're saying. Uh, I just don't feel feel I could have done that as a teenager, you know? Uh, definitely. Tell me a teenager that can do that, but actually do it and, and be honest. Yeah, 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 exactly. It, but it's not like I was ever dishonest. It just no. was, I was a bit more caged probably, yeah. um, guarded. But I mean, I just spoke about the world as I knew it. And my world was like way smaller then. Yes. You know, that's why you couldn't get like, being a wife, you just said beef. She's trying to marry me while I'm trying to marry beats. Love you one condition, leave. And if I don't speak it, first let me dump it this scene. You know what I mean? It's like, those are not situations that you're going through. No. When you're 16, 17, 18 years old. And also, if it was something that you're going through at 16, 17, 18, if you happen to be one of those people that kind of gets married young, the last thing you're going to do is put it in your music. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you're going to do is put it in your music because you're going to have people calling to you, you, you you're going all right. Like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah, that as well. Like, it's just like brutally honest and um, very open, this mm. record. And it, it provokes conversation, even like amongst mates and, or people that I'm working with. You know what I mean? We, we spoke a lot in the studio. Like, I would lay a verse and then we'll just talk for like half an hour. You know what I mean? And they'll say, you know what? i got a similar situation going on or, you know, I'm not really tight with this one and I understand mm. what you're saying. So it's like the deeper I got and the more personal I got, um, I felt like resonated with people because, you know, I hear that. we're all the same at the end of the day. We brought you T-shirt weather in the manner and then we had to play the record that took up 45 minutes of my show. <laughs> that was amazing. When you first gave it to me. You don't understand the power of that record. <laughs> like, we spoke about it at the time, but you brought flows out of gigs that I didn't think gigs <laughs> had in it. Yeah, man. He stepped up crazy. Like, he, you know, he's sick anyway, but it's just nice to hear him like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. And, you, and to be honest, I think you're the only person that could get that out of him. <laughs> like, if there was if there was anybody else, if, you, if, it was, if he was working with anybody else, yeah. I don't think he would have done he that. Had, he had a bone to pick anyway, because he felt like, you know, when I got the better of him a couple of times. <laughs> Previous. <laughs> so he was like... Nah, well, you nah. are the only person that went on power and said, right, I want 16. <laughs> I'm only doing it if I get 16. I asked him for about 16. He was like, no, no, how much are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> then... <laughs> Then I tried to turn up to his studio with the instrumental. Then he's like, no, play your version. Then he's like, I want to hear it again. Then he was doing these. And then he was counting the bars. How much have you telling me? How much have I done? You know, you don't write it down on that. Yeah, yeah, How much yeah. have I done? And I was like, 24. He's like, I've got another eight. I'm like, bro, you can leave me there. <laughs> he weren't having it. I love that. Firing. I love that. I, lo I Genuinely, I love that. And you know what? I will go on record and say I would prefer that over these dead clashes that are happening at the moment. <laughs> I genuinely, as a fan of the music, I'd much rather have something that I can go and spend my money on that is about the real art of lyricism than mum jokes. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are like, you're going to clash wildly again. I think it was around that time when I released the tune on Lord and the Mic. And then it was like, right, no, we've got a song together. <laughs> Let's get this you know money I mean? together. That's exactly. That. You're going to remember that for longer. It's true, and it's got more longevity. But yeah, yeah, now this is a, yeah, seashells in the East. Um, 
yeah, just uh, another another deep one, like an interesting track for me. You know, what I mean, poses a few questions uh, about you know, um, are we a product of our environment, and if we weren't born where we was born, would life be different? And can you break that cycle by having a strong mentality and um, and strong willpower? And yeah, check is something I've done in interesting thing I've done in the third verse as well it's what I've never really done before it's like a little poem that I put there that I really feel sums up the record so people when you buy the album like listen to this song and this last verse and uh, I should write it down one time and put it out there but um, I would love for people to hear that last verse yeah. you know what you need to do what do I got to do get it embroidered on the special cloth I've done that before <laughs> with another with another lyric I've done that do you know what that's going on the next suit I get made there you go yeah Okay, no, thank you. Jam, pleasure. Appreciate the support, always. You know, you've set levels. DJs can't even wheel up three wheel ups three times anymore. <laughs> you got to do it 28. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> you've done that kind of stuff. Appreciate it. Means a lot. <laughs>